I'm finally figured out. I'm a slow learner. All right. So a trained official is a better, uh, better official. That's what we're all about. We're trying to train officials and do all we can to uh, make sure that you know we know what we're doing out there. We're not uh, with this continual ignorance out there. Okay. Uh, but game officials, got you guys, the, um, the ones who are taking this course right now, and when we, when we give our exam and you pass it, uh, you'll be awarded a lapel pin that you get to wear in your uniform, either on your which side, it's going to be on the head or, or on the lapel of your shirt. And that's going to signify that, you know, you've been uh, – you're active, you actively been in our training, you active and uh, let people know that hey, you know, you're you're on the you're on the right path, on the right track. So those who come to this course and and, and take this course and finish it and, and pass the test will receive a lapel pin. I just ordered those, they should be in here um in about two weeks, anyways. This is a 10 weeks course, so you got time. All right, rule three. Now, I know you're going to ask, where it happened to rule two? Rule two is still here. What I've decided to do is rule two is about nothing but definition, which are a very important part of our training. But what we're going to do is versus just going through like, what is this? What is that? And defining everything. I decided to put, to enter, to put rule two in the other rules where it applies, right? So when we're talking about files, we'll, we'll, we'll define rule two files. We're talking about alignment in like rule four, uh, yeah, rule four or rule four, whatever the rule is, we will talk about um, the definition of an alignment. So in other words, I can tell you now, but are you gonna remember when we get to that particular rule? So rule two is gonna be interweaved in between all the other rules, all right? So rule three, periods, times, factors, and substitutions. All right, so just like in rule one, when we talk about the referee and all the responsibilities the referee have in rule one, there's, uh, there's a whole bunch of other responsibilities that the referee has in rule three. Uh, one of those responsibilities is the mutual agreement with opposing coaches to shorten a period for an emergency or terminate a game. So, you know, if an emergency pops up and the, the both, both coaches say, yeah, let's, let's get out of here. Let's shorten the periods to five minute a period or, or eight, six minute periods or whatever. Um, you know, the referee with mutual agreement with them say, okay, which I'm sure what referee will say no. Um, well, so, okay, let's shorten the periods or let's just let's kill the game and let the score let the score stands where it's at. All right. Conduct the coin toss. Obviously, that's pretty much in every level of football. Uh, the referee conducts the coin toss. Notify field captains and coaches when four minutes is left in either half. Okay. Very important, guys. I know a lot of us don't do it, but when there is no game clock, or you say I'm keeping the clock on the field, according to the National Federation High School rules, when it's four minutes left in the second and fourth period, you're supposed to stop the clock and you're supposed to let both teams know that it's four minutes remaining in the game. Okay. That's, that's uh responsibility referee. Pretty much. I used to do it all the time, honestly, uh, but you know, no, really, nobody, ever, no one ever does this. Does that one? Indicate that the period is officially ended by holding the ball with one hand overhead. And we're going to talk more about that here in a little bit. Order a game or play clock to stop or start. Uh, 
So the, the, the referee has a, a, a lot of discretion when, when they get down to the game clock and play clock, especially if he feels that a team is illegally conserving time or, or consuming time or he can, uh, he can stop the clock and say start on, the, start on the snap. He can start the clock and end the game. Uh, the referee have a lot of discretion when he gets down to the game clock if the referee feels that another team is trying to take an illegal advantage of the game clock or play clock. Correct obvious errors in game and play clock. The key word there is obvious. Okay. Um, I know, especially in youth, a lot of coaches crying. Hey, the time off the clock. You know, add the two seconds to the clock or whatever. If, um, if it's not obvious that there's an error, we don't have to change it. Or the referee doesn't have to change it, should I say. Notify teams within five seconds after the charge timeout has ended. So timeout is one minute. Once the timeout is over, you need to notify the team within five seconds that the charge timeout has ended and you'll set the ready for play. Indicate when the ball is ready for play. Duh, I just said that. And uh, you're responsible for the coach referee conference. I don't know if we're going to get into the coach referee conference today, maybe next week, but um, that's a misapplication or misinterpretation of the rule. Not, not for judgment call. And order a team to play. So, if it, you know, after halftime, you know, a team is taken – too long, he can order a team to play. If that team is not back on the field within two minutes, he can uh, forfeit the game um, in, advantage, in advantage of the one who's actually on the field. All right. Length of periods, half times, and intermission. All right. So the running time for a high school game is 40 eight minutes, right? Um, that's running time. I mean, the clock is actually running. Uh, the running time are divided into four 12-minute periods. Uh, one, minute in, one minute intermission between the first and second period and third and fourth would we change uh, field goals. Uh, change the goals that, that the teams are defending. Uh, there's between a 10 and 20 minute uh, halftime, followed by a three minute mandatory warm up. And also, uh, the rule three talks about a point differential. So, and it's all depend on the league that we're doing, and also depends on the state. There's two possibilities. One, the game can be terminated due through a point differential or running clock, which means we're going to suspend all normal timing rules uh, and just let the clock run, even though normal timing rules say the clock to stop. Now, what I've done, because it says the running time is 48 minutes, but if you add up the 48 minutes and, and just say an average of 15 minute halftime, Let's say all teams use their timeouts. Uh, and no, they didn't timeouts. I don't think so. And when, it, it's about 80 minutes of, of play. That's about scoring or any foul. So it's a 48 minute running time, but it can literally go an hour and 20 minutes. Again, it's without scoring or anything, just, just running through the minutes. So it'd be easily a two hour game. All right. So the crew of officials. So we, we looked at the referee, the crew officials authorized to delay and suspend game, the game, due to weather. Now, when it gets down to that, um, when it gets down to that, a couple of things. One, if there's a disagreement among the crew on if we're going to delay or suspend the game, the referee will take precedence, all right? Uh, re responsible for the three-minute warm-up if, if posted on the game clock uh, and, and, and started. So the referees are responsible to make sure that after the timeout is up, 
in, in, in National Federal High School, high school is mandatory that there be a three minute warm up. The, ref, the referee's got to make sure that it's on there and the clock has started. Official timeouts. Um, all referee responsible for giving official timeouts. And we're going to talk about that if we get to it today. And declares the ball dead if it's in your if it's in your coverage area. All right, starting and ending the period, section two and three. This is funny. Um, the reason why, when I, as, as I'm as I'm studying rule three, it's crazy because the first part of rule three talks about how we're going to start it and how we're going to end it. And then the rest of rule three talks about everything in the middle of that. So if you think of an Oreo, Oreo cookie, the, the, the two cookie parts is the starting and ending and the uh, cream in the middle is everything in the middle out about a time because a period is 12 minutes. So basically we're talking about how starting and ending, the, ending that period, how we're gonna start that period, that 12 minutes, and how we're gonna end that period to zero, zero, and then uh, the rest of the rule, section four, talks about everything else in between. All right, so a game of, started with a coin toss, all right? Uh, and the coin toss is conducted the first half of the game. So obviously, the second half of the game, there's no coin toss. Uh, four. And the, the coin toss will be conducted in the presence of four uniform field captains. Now, I know youth this may be a little different, but in high school, only players in uniform can come to the coin toss. Right? If you're not in uniform, you can't be part of the coin toss. Only uniform captains only. And only four, not five, not six. The referee shall instruct the visiting captain to give the heads. Our tails before the toss. All right. Now, when we get to mechanics, which is down the road, we we're going to go over how you properly conduct a coin toss because there's many. Right, we're seeing many people doing different things, and so we're going to actually go over the, the official mechanics for that, so we can all be on the same page and doing uh, the coin toss the same way. Only one form. Only one from each team shall be designated spokesman, right? So typically the referee always has the speaking captain to stand next to them so they can conduct the coin toss and, and, and hear the heads or tails. Three minutes, all right. So the coin toss shall be conducted three minutes before the schedule of game time on the field of play. Now, again, this is referring to the National Federation High School uh, in the manual, it says that you should bring the captains out five minutes before the field of play. They get, they get about two minutes to get out there, and then you can conduct the coin toss at the three minute mark, or you know, somewhere around that area. All right, here you go. See, rule two the field of play is the area within the boundary lines and goal line. So that's the sidelines and the goal line, not, not the goal, not the, not the end zone itself, but we're talking about the, uh, the, the boundary lines to the goal line. Um, and the reason why that's important because it says captains from each team may be present at the coin toss. All other team members in game uniform must remain outside the field of play, All right? So what do we typically see? Um, happen when we're about to do a coin toss. You get you see the rest of the team locking arms and they want to walk out to the hash mark. Well, they're on the field of play. And by rule, they're not supposed to be on the field of play. They're supposed to be on the sideline. And, and I'm, I'm going to say this, but please don't do it. Obviously, it could be an unsportsmanlike conduct on the coach if the players come on the field of play during the coin toss. Don't call it. It's the same. All right, the winner of the toss, and we're going to be talking about some preventive officiating in this whole scheme of things because we need to. Uh, preventive officiating, all right, winner of the coin toss. The winner of the coin toss gets first choice option, all right? Now, I know all this is basic to you guys. 
trust me, some of you guys are new. These, these videos are for new people as well. So, but we're gonna make, we all, we all start at the same level, okay guys? All right, so the, the first choice option is two choices that they can have. One, the first choice is to choose whether his team will kick or receive. Second choice, is to choose the goal his team will defend, all right? Now, those are the two choices that the winner has. If the winner does not want to have first choice option, then the winner may defer his first choice option for the second half. Make sense? So again, his, his two options are to choose whether his team will kick or receive, or choose the goal, the goal his team will defend. But if he don't, if he don't want to, if he, if he want to defer his uh, first choice options, he can give it to the loser. Now, preventive officiating. All right. Most teams think that if I choose to kick. That means the next half I receive, All right? They automatically think that if you kick, that means you receive, and that's not true, okay? If whoever has, let's just go here. All right, the other choice options. The loser should have first choice options at the half the winner didn't select. So on this one, the winner, if the, if the winner selects the kick, then he has the half, the second half to uh, choose to have the first choice options because uh, he already chose an option. If he chose the defer, that means he gave the loser the first half, uh, op, first choice option. That makes sense. Remaining option goes to the team who didn't have first choice, all right? So again, A wins the coin toss. A say they want to kick. B decides what goal he wants to defend, and he will receive. When the, when that when the second half come on, B now gets the first choice option for the second half. He can say, "I want to receive," and then the other team get to choose which which goal they want to defend. Thing is, what's going to happen is they're like, wait a minute, we kicked the first half. We should receive the second half. No, you chose to kick. So he get to choose the second half. Now, if he say, I choose to defer, then he's going to let the other team make the first choice and then they get to make the second choice, the first choice, the second half. Preventive officiating, when you're doing your pregame check and you and you're telling the coach about sportsmanship. You're asking the coach if all his players legally equipped and without wearing illegal equipment. Ask the coach if you win the coin toss, what do you want to do? If the coach say he want to receive, awesome. If the other coach say he want to defer, awesome. So when you do the coin toss and A wins the coin toss and A head coach said he want to receive, you're going to be like, you want a coin toss, you want to receive, correct? Make it simple. You already know what the head coach they want to do. You want to receive? And if it's a smart captain, he was like, yes, I want to receive. All right? If, the other, if B wins, you're going to say, you want to defer, correct? And he'll be like, yeah, I want to defer. So that way, we take out any problems, because trust me, <laughs> I've seen the problems and you know I'm not saying I was part of the problems but I've seen the problems alright alright so after the coin toss each half begins with a kickoff rule 2 the definition here we go a kickoff is a free kick which puts the ball in play at the beginning of each half of the game so before the first period and before the third period there will be a kickoff. Each half of the game shall start, start started by a kickoff. 
So let's talk football, period. Well, when I, when I wrote that, I was thinking about what the young people say right now when they be like, he can't kick my butt, period. So that's what I'm thinking about. All right. The game clock should start for a period two ways. If a period, if a period begins with a free kick, when the kick is touched other than touching by K. Now, honestly, I don't like how the rule book works. It's obvious, right? Obviously, the clock doesn't start until R touches the ball, right? But in the rule book, because I put that by R, I put that in there. But the rule book says the period um, will start on a free kick when it's touched other than touching by K. So the kicking team touched the ball, the clock won't start. When the referee blow the red for whistle, red for play whistle, the, the clock doesn't start until it is kicked, go beyond the, um, the, the, the 10 yard neutral zone and a player of R touches the ball, that's when the clock starts. And I, in youth football, I say the clock starts when the whistle is blown. I say the clock starts when the whistle, the ball is kicked, you know, but in, in high school, the ball shouldn't start until it's touched by R. The covering official who see it touch should wind the clock. The, I mean, that one, the start, the, use a start clock um, signal to get that clock moving. That's everybody's responsibility on kickoff, not just the, the, the referee. All game officials have a responsibility to start the clock uh, when it's touched by, um, by R. And if a period begins with a snap, uh, when the ball is legally snapped. So obviously, if it's an illegal um, snap, it'll be a dead ball infraction, which we'll talk about when we get to that portion of the rules. Uh, but it has to be a legal snap. So it's a free kick touched by R and a legal snap that will start the clock or start the period, which is the period is the time uh, in the game. Right? Here we go, definition of two, uh, they go to definition of rule two. We're going to, again, we're going to integrate it throughout the rules. K is the team which legally kicks the ball during the down. The opponent is R. All right. A period, at the end of each period, the referee shall hold the ball in one hand over head to indicate the period has officially ended after delaying momentarily to ensure that no foul has occurred, no obvious timing error has occurred. And I don't know, no referee that's going to be like, oh, no, the period has ended. We got to add another 30 seconds to the clock. Yeah, right. um, no request uh, for a coach referee conference has occurred. And no other ir irregularity has occurred. So we're going to talk about this here in a second right here. But a period hasn't ended until those things are looked at. So don't rush to end a period because the clock zero zero. You need to look around, check with your officials, referees, and make sure that we're good. There's no fouls. There's nobody having a problem, no questions. And then once we realize that everything is good to go, we do, the, we do the mechanics. A period shall be extended by an untimed down if one of the followings occur during a down in which time expires. There was a foul by either, either time. <laughs> other, either team. There was a foul by either team, and the penalty is accepted. Now, that's true and false because if it's an unsportsmanlike conduct foul or non-player foul, which I believe I got it in here, that would not um, cause the play, uh, the down to the period to be extended. There was a double foul, all right? That means, again, on the definitions, rule two, a double foul when a foul is committed by both teams. There was an inadvertent whistle, right? 
That's the boo-boo. And in high school football, if you have an inadvertent whistle, you're buying beer or whatever you drink for the team uh, when, uh, when you go on to wherever you go after the game. If a touchdown was scored, the try is attempted unless the touchdown is scored during the last down uh, in the fourth period. And the, the rest of that in the rules thought states that if it's if 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 it's your state association have it to where um, those points are used to determine the playoff, then you may still have to do the extra point. But if not, the game is is over. We don't extend the period for the try when it's the last fourth period, unless obviously. If the if the tie will if the try will either tie the ball game or give them the win, then you will extend the period and do the try. All right, a period shall not be extended by any on time down if any of the followings occur during a down and uh, uh, when time expires. One, when a when a defensive foul uh, during a successful try or uh -huh. foul goal, but a field goal. Um, uh, doing a field goal. So if it's a if it's a defensive foul and successful test, uh, try or field or field goal, we don't extend the period. Uh, we just mark off that foul from the succeeding spot. Uh, there is an unsportsmanlike come uh, unsportsmanlike or non-player foul by either team. I discussed that. Those two files are very important in all your decisions, and we will talk about that later on, but we do not extend the period for that. A file that specify a loss of down. So, you know, uh, illegal pass is a loss of down. Um, so uh, intentional grounding is a loss of down. So let's say uh, on a try and they're going for a try and it, it, there's two, four passes or across the line of scrimmage uh, and the, the, uh, the, the B accepts the foul is a loss of down. They don't get to try again. We don't extend the period. Uh, fouls that in, um, fouls that in, uh, that enforce on the subsequent, subsequent kickoff, right? So files that you can enforce on this uh, on a subsequent kickoff, we do not extend the period for. Files for which enforcement by rule is a safety, right? So any of those we do not extend the period for. We just move on to the next period. All right. All right, starting and stopping the game clock. So now we're gonna to get to the cream in the middle of the Oreo cookies. So we looked at what start the period or start the 12 minutes clicking or whatever the, the, the running time of the game is, 10 minutes, eight minutes, whatever the case may be. And then what ends that period. Now we're gonna talk about and everything in the middle of starting and stopping the game clock. Obviously, the game, once the game clock is over, that determines the winner of the game. So let's get into it. Starting the game clock. The game clock can be started by a free kick touch by arm, a legal snap, and the ready, and the referee's ready for play. There's an asterisk by that because that's not always the case, but a referee ready for play can start the clock. And we're going to talk about, we're going to talk about that further in detail in a little bit. Now, the ready for play cannot start the clock for a new period or a major clock stoppage. Okay. The ready for play cannot start the clock for a new period or a major clock stoppage, all right? The only, only, only the first two can start the clock on a new period, all right? 
And when there's a major clock stoppage, which we'll cover in a little bit, the referee ready for play signal cannot be used with a major clock stoppage. And everybody should know what the major clock stoppages are. Referees and, and game officials alike. All right. The ready for play and the star clock signal uh, can be used for an official timeout unless a major clock stoppage is involved. Following a foul, unless a major clock stoppage is involved. And start the clock on an inadvertent whistle, unless a major clock stoppage is involved. So obviously, we need to figure out what these major clock stoppages are, because if we have a major stop clockage, they're ready for play, and why? If we get it ready for play, but we can't start the clock, we can't get the start clock signal because of that. And I've seen many games um, where there was a major clock stoppage and the referee is winding the clock to start. All right, the game clock. So that's what starts the game clock. Now, what stops the game clock? It's not the major clock stoppage. He was talking about overall what, what stops the game clock. The down ends following a foul. Guys, I'm gonna, when, when we come out and evaluate you guys, obviously the first thing we see is your mechanics. We can't tell if you know the rules when we come out and watch you until we watch you um, ref, uh, make some calls, and then we ask you some questions, and then that, that help us uh, uh, figure out what you know. But the first thing about being official is what you do and knowing your mechanics. And when you have a foul in the play, you, you see holding, you throw your flag, or you see blocking the back, or whatever, you throw your, your flag. At the end of that down, if you're not stopping the clock, you don't, you don't know your mechanics, right? And I see it all the time. They throw their whistle and they come up to the referee. They blow the whistle and they walk up to the referee talking about, I have a hole. If y'all ever knew me from the beginning, <laughs> you know, some people might call me a dick, but when, when, when one of my officials came up to me and say, I got a foul, I'd be like, no, you don't, because you didn't stop the clock. They'd be like, oh, yeah, I'm sorry. And they'll stop the clock. When you have a foul, and at the end of the down, you stop the clock. If it's a dead ball foul, you put a boop, blow your whistle and then stop the clock. Right? In the play, stop the clock. You got to. Right? And really, especially the official who actually threw the flag should be throwing, should be stopping the clock. An official's timeout, and we're, we're going to talk about that in greater detail. I don't know if we're going to get to it tonight. But next week, we'll talk about all the official timeouts there are. A charge timeout, obviously by a team, and also radio, TV, which I don't think none of us actually see. The period ends. The clock stops. Obviously, there's no more time on the clock. The ball goes out of bounds. Tricky. That's a true and false uh, statement. But yeah, when the ball goes out of bounds, not in hands with nobody, but the ball go out of bounds, we stop the clock. A four pass is incomplete. That's legal or illegal four pass. If it's incomplete, the clock stops. An inverted whistle. As soon as you hear the sound or, or you know the ball is live, you stop the clock. Airborne receiver who is carried out of bounds, not backwards. Guys, very important because everybody, most coaches think if a player go out of bounds, you're supposed to stop the clock. Yes and no, right? We're looking at forward progress is the key word here. So if I get hit and I go forward out of bounds, we stop the clock. If I get hit and go backwards out of bounds, forward progress ended in bounds, so we keep the clock running, right? If I go hit, if I get hit and I go sideways out of bounds, the clock keeps running because forward progress stopped in bounds. 
The only time we stop the clock when somebody go out of bounds is when they're going forward out of bounds. That, that fourth progress would be the out of bounds spot. So we stop the clock. Not, nothing backwards or side. All right, here we go. Major clock stoppages. There's 10 of them, and everyone should know these. You may see it on your test or your exam, should I say. Major clock stoppages. One, the ball goes out of bounds, right? Two, B or R is awarded a new series. Three, a new series following a legal kick. Four, the ball dead behind the goal line. So that's not just including a touchdown, but it's also on a touchdown where there's a foul involved. So let's say the clock, before the clock, the ball was snapped, the clock is running, right? Uh, you know, you ran the ball, the clock is running. The next play, the clock is still running. He takes a handoff, he scores, but there was a hole on, on the offensive line. The ball became dead behind the goal line when he, when he scored. So when you bring it back and you mark off the hole, the clock doesn't start until the snap because he actually crossed the goal line, and that's when the ball became dead. Or it passes incomplete, legal or illegal. A charge timeout. Um, be it TV or team charge timeout. A period ends, team attempts to consume time illegally, and then this is where the referee comes in at, because he, let's say, based, based on the down, the clock's supposed to run. But a team try to consume time, the referee can order the clock to be stopped and not started until the snap. Delay a game foul is accepted. Anytime you throw a delay a game foul, clock doesn't start until the snap. A fair catch is made, right? Those are the 10 major clock stoppages. Some of those are official timeouts. And uh, so, uh, some of those are fouls. Uh, so in any of those, when those are hit, the ready for play cannot be used to start the clock. It can either be started by a, a free kick that's touched by R or a legal snap, right? So the ready for play does not start the clock on the major clock stop. All right, there you go. Only a free kick or a legal snap shall start the game clock. All right, guys, we're going to stop it there. We have three minutes. I'm going to unmute you guys. Give me one second. Hope I know what I'm doing here.